Things in video games don't always react the way they do in real life. Waterfalls don't generally have treasure chests behind them, and if I were to punch a barrel, that barrel wouldn't explode just because it happened to be red. Maybe it's just full of marinara sauce. That said, there are plenty of times in video games where we've done something objectively stupid and dangerous, and then made a shocked Pikachu face when we end up getting a game over because of it. I don't know what we expected to happen. Check out these seven stupid game overs that we definitely should have seen coming, and beware spoilers ahead for the following games. Would Grand Theft Auto be more popular if you had to laboriously build every car you drove around in from scratch? No, obviously. However, it does still make for an intriguing game experience, as proven by My Summer Car, a game set in 1995 in the middle of the Finnish countryside, which is ostensibly about winning a rally race. However, the game involves you having to do every element of the process, from rebuilding and upgrading your battered Datsun 100A, the titular summer car, and earning enough money to buy parts and enter the competition by doing tedious odd jobs. <laughs> While this is in theory a game about your car though, it's as much a game about maintaining the driver. Your player character has Sims-style comfort bars for everything from hunger, to tiredness, to stress, to, yes, urine. And also the capacity for extremely poor decisions, like driving drunk, falling into a septic tank, or expelling that aforementioned urine onto electronics. Probably the stupidest game over in the game, and one that we definitely should have seen coming, is this, having a cigarette while refueling your car at a gas station. It's probably not great for the car either. Anyway, last night Sally called and she said she desperately needed my detective skills. She refused to say why over the phone. Naturally, I said I'd drive to Moon Lake immediately, but weird things started happening the moment I pulled up. Teen super sleuth Nancy Drew is supposed to be a smart, observant detective, which is possibly why the various video games based on her adventures include a bunch of stupid deaths to punish people who aren't that. Because while it is possible to play a Nancy Drew adventure game as a competent crime solver, it's equally possible to stomp around the place being rude, causing chaos, and wrecking everything the various characters you meet hold dear. Whoops. You did what? Another case solved. What case? The case of the unbroken chandelier. Most of the time, the game overs you earn from these actions aren't fatal, because no one wants to listen to Nancy Drew, say, suffocate to death in an airtight tomb. Oh. My mistake. Still, while suffocating to death in an airtight tomb is something that could happen to any of us, we're less likely to stumble across a can of toxic pesticide and then spray it directly into our own face, as it's possible to do in Nancy Drew, Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. And yet here's Nancy doing exactly that. <laughs> If your brain works the way ours does, you're probably wondering what happens if you do that over and over again. The answer to which is... Nancy chokes to death and dies. Obviously. Doesn't take a genius level detective to figure that out. Fallout 3's impressive slate of DLC saw your lone wanderer travel to the frozen war zone of Alaska, a Lovecraftian seaside village full of horrors, and worst of all, Pittsburgh. It also let you go to space, thanks to the add-on Mothership Zeta, an enjoyably campy, B-movie style story that sees you fighting off alien abductors aboard the alien craft of the title. 
being in space, Mothership Zeta had to introduce a few new gameplay mechanics to Fallout 3, such as teleporters, alien weaponry, and spacesuits which allow your character to survive the deadly vacuum outside the ship's artificial atmosphere. Or at least they do, if you keep them on. Oh, make sure you wear a spacesuit before you go out there, or you could die. Don't forget! If you decide, for whatever reason, that the spacesuit just isn't your vibe, you are of course more than welcome to take it off and change into something more stylish. The downside is, your head will explode. Bethesda appears to have learned their lesson as this isn't an option in their later space-only RPG, Starfield. To which I say, come on Bethesda, what happened to the concept of players' choices? Players' stupid, stupid choices. The Soul Calibur series of fighting games are 3D with ring outs, so you have to make sure you're aware of your surroundings so you don't do something embarrassing like accidentally jump into a lake when you're trying to avoid your opponent. happens to the best of us. Even more embarrassing, however, is the humiliating KO you can receive in your battle against the giant stone statue known as Colossus. Colossus, as you may have noticed, is f***ing massive, standing well over 20 feet tall and presumably being made of solid stone. You lose. It's that last part that's a problem for you if you're not smart about it, however, because if you do manage to beat Colossus, he will keel over, and if you're stood underneath him when it happens, he will keel you by landing on you and crushing you. Gotta say, jumping humiliatingly into a lake starting to look real good right about now. This is nice work. It's new, isn't it? You know the trouble with an adventurous life, son? It can end before it gets started. If you ask us, Kingdom Come Deliverance by Warhorse Studios isn't a game that was exactly screaming out for a more realistic, hardcore mode. This was, after all, a game where you could barely see a thing at night, where you could end up with a catastrophic stat-reducing hangover if you drank too much, and where you could end up locked in prison and burned to death during the prologue. How about, and this is just a suggestion, a less realistic, easy mode? Believe it or not, becoming a tiny pile of ash in the opening hours of the game isn't even the wildest game over in Kingdom Come Deliverance. That comes when you attempt to start a new game in the hardcore difficulty mode. Reflecting the fact that in the hard times of 1403, 90% of people wouldn't live long enough to make it into adulthood, you'll likely have to attempt to start multiple games before you even get to the late teens you presumably are when the story begins. I mean, get good, scrub. There are a few of these deaths written for the game, but by far the most heartbreaking sees your character only on Earth for the briefest imaginable amount of time when you, and afterwards your mother, die during childbirth. I mean, it's good for my any percent speed run, but not much more than that. Fortunately, after a couple of re-rolls, you'll survive, at which point your reward is you get to pick from two permanent negative anti-perks that you'll carry with you for the rest of your hardcore playthrough, like unpredictable sleepwalking or a tapeworm. What's wrong with easy mode, Warhorse Studios? Who hurt you? Morning. Nine-S. The commander's put me in charge of your maintenance, ma'am. That means I'll be performing regular checks on you from now on. Nier Automata is the undisputed champion of foolish, self-inflicted game overs, as we've seen with its endings triggered by wandering off, eating fish, or removing your own OS chip to see what would happen. Yeah, makes sense. 
However, perhaps the most thoughtless and regrettable game over in Nier Automata is the ending known as Ending You, which makes use of the game's self-destruct feature. Being androids, 2B and 9S have access to a button that at any time causes them to explode, leaving them on one hit point but dealing big damage to foes around them in the process. It's not hugely useful except for the fact that it also destructs your android's pants, which you may want to do for a number of reasons. One of which is an achievement. The others are your own business. The problem is, when I say you can use this button at any time, I mean it, and that includes when you're on board the Bunker, Yorha's orbital space station. If you explode while you're here, it'll kill all your companions and blow up the entire space station, earning you the ending U for debunked. <laughs> Probably better to just play the game with pants on. You'll just have to get by somehow. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. Considering how vital sleep is to humans, it's amazing how little of a factor it is in video games. In most RPGs, you can go from near certain doom to saving the entire planet without ever resting your head on a pillow. Amativ, mubokotin stinsela. Meanwhile, if I don't get a tight eight hours, I can barely remember my own name. I'm pretty sure it's Andy. Disco Elysium is unique in many ways, but the way it handles sleeping is different from most games. You can stay up until 2am, singing karaoke and such, but after that, time stops and you can no longer progress the game because everyone has gone home to bed. <laughs> but now... You... It may or may not be connected to that karaoke performance. What's more, you can't just lie down in the street and close your eyes. Disco Elysium requires you to find an appropriate place to sleep, and often that involves paying 20 real to sleep at the Whirling in Rags hostel cafeteria. Good, you got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. By day three, the fishing village unlocks and there's an abandoned hut where you can stay for free. But if, on day two, you've spent all your cash and don't have a place to stay, there's another option that begins to look mightily attractive. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags and organic waste. Doesn't seem that different to my student apartment. Similar size too. In spite of fairly rich descriptions as to how disgusting the dumpster smells, you can choose to, as the game puts it, embrace being Hobocop and slide yourself into this putrid, garbage-filled container. The smell of rotten food rises up at you as you climb inside the trash container. Unfortunately, it turns out that sleeping in a rancid dumpster has consequences, and the game slaps you with an instant game over and an absolutely withering report in the local newspaper. Disgraced cop sleeps in trash. Uh, make that disgraced cop gets a tight eight hours in trash and can now remember his own name. It's definitely Jane. Gart, manager of the establishment, had this to say. He did ask for a free room, and I said no. I don't make the rules of the game. I just play my part. Hey, thanks for watching this video about wild game overs that we did not see coming, even though we should have. If you want to watch more videos from Outside Xbox, click on this video here for something from us. Something from Outside Extra down here. And if you'll excuse me, uh, there is a piano suspended above me right now. The rope is getting very thin. So what I'm going to do is just sit here. Probably be fine. Quick, end the video before something happens.